San Antonio starts right now. Lasers in space. It sounds like a sci-fi movie plot, but NASA is working to make it a reality. Today at 9, a live interview with a NASA expert who will explain why they are launching lasers into space and what they'll be used for. Did the parents have any reasonable idea that he may use that weapon to hurt other people? Could the parents face charges after their 15-year-old son is accused of shooting and killing four people at a Michigan high school? The latest on the investigation coming up in your morning headlines. A local holiday drive is making sure hundreds of children and elderly get gifts this Christmas. Coming up, how you can help. And hey, good morning to you. It is Friday, November 3rd. Happy Friday. Thanks for joining us. I hope you're having a great morning so far. Uh, some people are seeing rain out there, but not a whole lot of it. I made a between the newscast taco run and there were sprinkles out here in the downtown area just a short time ago. Here's Justin with more as we go outside with live cam and I saw some sun earlier, Justin, but it's gone now. It tried to peek through for a time this morning, but it is gone. We've got some showers that are moving through San Antonio. Good news is the sun will be back this afternoon. It'll make a reappearance. Let's look at the radar. We'll show you where the rain is at this hour. That light rain working through central parts of San Antonio, especially there on the southeast side, seeing a little bit more coverage. And uh, we can go ahead and zoom in a little bit closer here to the city of San Antonio and show you where some of that light rain is uh, moving into the China Grove area along 35 and 410 there on the city's east side. This is going to make for some wet roads. A few issues out there as well as this rain moves north and east. As far as temperatures go, we're in the 60s here around town. It's been a mild start. Now you look out west and you can see some of those clouds are trying to clear and that'll be the trend as we get into the afternoon. Again, sun will pop back out and that will allow temperatures to make it into the 70s for highs today. 76 2 p.m. 78 by 4 p.m and look for 74 at 6 o'clock southerly winds 5 to 10 miles per hour. We'll get you another update on the radar coming up here in just a few minutes and talk the weekend forecast coming up, guys. All right, Justin, thank you very much. Right now we want to take you live out to 1604 at Culebra. Now the main lanes are moving, but it looks like the frontage road has come to a halt right now, and that is right there. It looks like by that tire shop there just before Culebra. Again, stacking on the access road. This would appear to be the westbound. You could also call it southbound 1604 near Culebra. We don't have any details, but all the uh, lanes of the access road are currently closed off. Traffic slowing in that area as people kind of take a look and see what's going on out there. It also looks like the roads are wet at least in part of that area. Yeah, that front end road looks like it's completely stopped, at least in that area over there. And for now, let's look at today's Night at Nine. Both chambers of Congress passed a bill to fund the government through February of next year, narrowly avoiding a government shutdown. President Biden could sign the bill sometime today. The measure gives Congress several more weeks to work on a longer term funding plan covering the entire fiscal year. Cases of the Omicron variant are being confirmed in at least five states this morning. Five of those cases in New York. Other cases are confirmed in California, Hawaii, Minnesota and Colorado. President Biden has unveiled his plan to keep COVID at bay this winter. Air travelers entering the U.S. must now test negative for COVID within a day of departure, regardless of vaccination status or nationality. And the mask mandate on public transportation, including planes, has been extended through March. Some schools in Michigan are remaining closed this morning following this week's deadly shooting at Oxford High School and new threats circulating on social media. One superintendent says the extended closure is out of an abundance of caution, but classes will resume next week. Many migrants entering the U.S. through the southern border are likely to be sent to Mexico starting next week. The Biden administration is said to re-implement a policy that forces many non-Mexican migrants to remain in Mexico while they await immigration court dates. The Texas law banning abortion pills after a certain time period is now in effect. The legislation cuts the window in which doctors can prescribe abortion inducing medication from 10 weeks of pregnancy down to seven. The new law also prohibits mailing the abortion inducing drugs, requires an in-person examination and follow-up visit. 
A strike by Kellogg's workers could be coming to a close. The company saying it's reached a tentative agreement with workers that includes 3% raises, cost of living adjustments, and no change to health benefits. The 1,400 employees will vote on the new contract on Sunday. They have been on strike since October 5th at all four U.S. cereal plants. McDonald's is bringing back a holiday fan favorite, their holiday pie. It is filled with vanilla custard, baked in a buttery crust, and topped with rainbow sprinkles. McDonald's says the pie will be available until early January, but won't be released nationwide. The good news, Texas is one of the few states where you can find these pies. A sequel to last year's Mariah Carey's Magical Christmas special lands on Apple TV Plus today. This year, special guests include DJ Khalid and Kirk Franklin. Mariah says she will sing a fan favorite that she didn't include in last year's special. And that's today's 9 at 9. And your other morning headlines, scary moments for passengers on a flight headed to San Antonio. And we could see new charges today after this week's high school shooting up in Michigan. Plus, a speeding car ends up in a fountain. And now the driver might be in hot water. RJ Marcus joins us this morning with all of those stories and more. Good morning. Good morning yeah, RJ. good Friday morning, guys. Not a good uh, not a good day for that driver there. We'll show you some of that video here in just a bit. But let's go ahead and start with the latest in that Michigan high school shooting. We could find out today if the parents of the 15 year old shooter will also be charged in this case. This morning, Ethan Crumley faces several charges, including terrorism, first degree murder and seven counts of assault with intent to murder and a dozen weapons charges. Four students died in that shooting and investigators still trying to figure out why Crumbly opened fire at the school. Other questions they're trying to answer is what role his parents may have had. The purchase of the weapon, the accessibility of the weapon, was it securely stored? Uh, was, it, um, was it purchased for the, the shooter? Um, did the parents have any reasonable idea that he may use that weapon to hurt other people. And again, a lot of questions still need to be answered, including what, if anything, the Crumbleys knew before that attack took place. And we also are hearing this morning that two teachers separately reported concerning behavior from Ethan Crumbly starting the day before that shooting. Now to Wisconsin, where a district attorney now says his office set bail too low for the man who later drove into a crowd at a Christmas party, killing six people and injuring dozens, dozens more. This week's this uh, weeks before that tragedy on November 21st, 39 year old Daryl Brooks was in jail on a domestic violence charge. A woman who said she was the mother of his child accused him of running her over in her car. Well, the Milwaukee County DA says an assistant prosecutor mistakenly set bail at $8,000 for that case. He also said his office didn't take a look at Brooks's risk assessment or have a lot of time to review that case. And a mistake was made. You got to keep that in mind, but you can't excuse it as well. Because, like I said, it was just one link in a series of chains that uh, ultimately led to a tragedy. And that DA also saying this morning that Brooks had been charged with reckless endangerment in 2020 and at that time was released on a $500 bail. Okay, now to that scary situation for passengers on a Frontier Airlines flight. They had to make an emergency landing in El Paso yesterday after multiple passengers reported feeling sick. Check out that scene behind me. The flight left from Las Vegas and was scheduled to land right here in San Antonio. Over 200 passengers were on board, but the plane landed around 730 last night in El Paso. Multiple passengers were taken off the plane by stretcher and loaded onto ambulances. Turns out there was a strong smell of chemical fumes in the cabin, which made it hard for some people to breathe and others feeling pretty sick. Authorities say those passengers were treated for carbon monoxide poisoning. Hazmat crews showed up to the scene and inspected that plane. So there's no word this morning on exactly what caused that smell, but we do know that the flight was delayed in Vegas for nearly an hour while crews fixed a fuel line. Find out more about that. Okay, now to the dramatic early morning crash that was caught on camera in Pennsylvania yesterday. An SUV was seen flying into a traffic circle Watch it here in just a little bit into the fountain at the center of that circle. You can watch right there. Boom, out of control driver. He ended up going airborne. So this was the same vehicle that was reportedly involved in a hit and run before the crash. So which happened as police were looking for that suspect. Authorities are investigating this incident as a possible drinking while driving DUI. The driver was taken to the hospital and expected to recover. Scary scene, guys, but as you could see, Pretty empty, no one else in that area right there. But of course, uh, you know, got to stay safe when you're out there in the middle of the night, especially yeah. in the early morning hours.
Very scary. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, RJ. Thanks, Thank guys. you very much, sir. 907, about 66 degrees. Still ahead on GMSA at 9. A NASA expert is standing by to join us live with details on a first-of-a-kind mission to send giant lasers into space. What these beams of light will be used for and how it could change the future of space exploration. But first, we take you live to San Antonio Housing Authority. Tiffany Huertas has details about a holiday toy drive going on right now. This SA Salute holiday greeting is brought to you by the Republic of Texas Window Company. I'm Hunter Townsend with the Republic of Texas Window Company, and me and my son Xander would like to wish the veterans and first responders a happy holidays. Happy holidays! The season of giving is here and the San Antonio Housing Authority is making sure local children and elderly residents in need get presents this Christmas. This year, Saha is hosting its largest resident holiday gift collection is asking for your help to reach their goal. Uh, Tiffany Huertas joins us live from Saha with more. Tiffany, good morning. How many gifts are they hoping to collect this year? Good morning, Mark and Stephanie. Happy Friday. Their goal is 1,000 gifts, but knowing San Antonio residents in the community, I think that they're going to surpass that. But check it out. People have already been buying and sending gifts here. All the gifts collected will go to children and elderly residents who might not have any gifts under the tree this year. To talk more about this is Susan ramos Sossaman with Saha. Good morning. Talk to us about how many families does Saha serve and what type of services does Saha provide? Good morning. Um, yes, yeah, so the San Antonio Housing Authority provides housing assistance to nearly 6,000 families in our public housing communities. Along with housing assistance, we provide services to assist families pursue education, training, and employment goals, all in an aim to improve their quality, quality of life. We also look for opportunities to community build. Talk to us about the families, Saha, service that will be receiving these gifts this holiday season. So the families who will be served are a among the most vulnerable in our community. 98% fall within the very low income criteria, and they report a, for a family of three, an income just below 10,000 annually. And talking to them, the pandemic has really impacted all of their lives, right? right? Yeah, so we, our, our families usually are under a lot of stress and the pandemic just added to that. And so we're really looking at an opportunity to give back and make this holiday season a little special. Talk to us about the gifts that you all are seeking for this holiday drive. Right, so we reached out to our families and we asked them, tell us some ideas on wish lists. And what we were hearing from our elderly is they were asking for bed sheets, slippers, even laundry detergent. And our kiddos were asking for art supplies, books, um, volleyballs, hair bows, and we actually have a complete list of wish list items at our Amazon site. What does it mean to collect these gifts this holiday season? It means that we have a generous community who's always willing to jump in, and it means that our families will have a respite from the stressors they face year round and they get an opportunity to really have a joyous holiday season. How can people donate? I know that there's a website and there's yes. also Amazon that they can go to the wish list. Yeah, I'm excited to share that you can visit our website, saha.org slash North Pole, and you can get more direction on our wish list and the four different ways to contribute. One, you can shop directly from our Amazon website. The gifts will be delivered here to Central by the December 9th deadline. Um, or you can use the wish list as inspiration, shop locally, and deliver your gifts to us. Um, um, you're, if you have a business, you can have your own collection site and you can you know, get gifts and deliver them to us. Or if the season is so busy and you don't have time to shop yourself, we will shop for you. If you give us a monetary donation, we'll make sure to get those gifts to those in need. Fantastic. So until December 9th, you Correct. still have time. Yes, definitely. We encourage everybody to consider giving. I can guarantee you it will make a difference. I can't wait to see those smiles on all the residents' faces. Well, thank you for joining thank us you. this morning. And it's all about giving this holiday season. Back to you guys in the studio. Thank you, Tiffany. I'm glad Saha is off to a good start. Me too. All right. Uh, Justin Horn joins us now. And we're looking at Transguide real quick because we're tracking that in sound. 1604 and Culebra. And Justin, um, you've been looking at this a little closer. Have you found out any more information? It just looks like maybe they're cleaning up something there. I, I think there was a spell. And we know the roads were fairly, I mean, they're still wet right now. Mm -hmm. So we don't know that Slick Roads contributed any sort of accident there. But it has been slow going in 1604 
and uh, Culebra this morning. Lots of wet roads around San Antonio. Some yeah. showers are working their way through, so it's kind of a wet start, but the payoff will be this afternoon because we will get more sun and it will turn into another nice day. Side note real quick, that's sure. on the access road yes. there. The access road, yes. yes. 1604 point, Calabria yes. area would be the westbound or southbound side of 1604. Yes. Okay, there's a look at the uh, the radar and you see the showers are starting to kind of move out of here. Uh, we still have some activity on the city's uh, east side, but this is kind of the back edge here. So once this moves out to the north and east, We'll say goodbye to the rainfall and it's all been light. It hasn't amounted to much at all. Let's zoom in a little bit closer here and you can see where some of the maybe moderate rain is probably still fairly light here on the I-10 and the uh, 410 there on the city's east side and then working its way out towards 1604 and I-10 as you head east out of town. Uh, looking at the water vapor, and I think this kind of tells the story here. So that's our little piece of energy that came out of Mexico last night. And this orange color represents more stable air that is working in now to San Antonio. So that's why, uh, again, rain chances will begin to quickly go away. And in fact, we'll get some clearing already seeing that out around places like Del Rio and Eagle Pass where things have cleared, though. There's some fog trying to develop. We'll show you visibility here in just a second. First, though, let's look at the time lapse. We had a little bit of fog here in San Antonio, but not much. And you can see some of those showers that work through a little bit earlier. 67 at the airport, south southeasterly winds at 10 and looking at visibility. There's some lower numbers here. New Braunfels, Randolph down to Stinson, but it hasn't been too bad in and around San Antonio. The one problem spot we are seeing is out near Uvalde where visibility is close to zero. And that's where the skies cleared a little bit, allowed some of that fog to develop. Satellite picture, and you can see the, uh, the, the clouds that are producing the rain moving through here in San Antonio and then back out to the west. That's some of that low cloudiness and fog that developed in Uvalde just sort of on the edge of that. It's clear out in Del Rio, 69 there, 66 in Carrizo Springs, and everything will clear west to east today. The forecast calls for temperatures to be up around 76 by 2 p.m., 78 your high temperature today that will fall back into the 60s tonight. It'll be another warm start both Saturday and Sunday. We may get some more fog to deal with too. Across the country, there's some snow up across the northern tier of states. We've got a little bit of rain here in Texas, otherwise still fairly quiet. There are some winter weather advisories up here, but we showed you earlier on GMSA, there are actually blizzard warnings for parts of Hawaii. This isn't too uncommon. Now they get snow there in Hawaii on the peaks above 11,000 feet on the big island. But blizzard warnings, well, they're expecting winds up to around 100 miles per hour, at least a gust to 100 miles per hour as this storm system moves through and it will produce some snow. So kind of unusual there. Um, and unusual in the sense that it is Hawaii that has the blizzard warnings, not the Dakotas or Michigan or something like that. So kind of a, a, a change, if you will. For uh, future cast for us, we're going to see uh, quiet conditions this weekend other than some of that morning fog and cloud cover. And then by Monday, here comes a front. This should move through Monday morning. With it, we'll get the tail end of some showers and storms, and then it uh, clears out some Monday afternoon, but it will be cooler. Uh, we're expecting highs in the 60s and dew points finally come down a little bit. So 77 tomorrow, 79 on Sunday, 65 on Monday behind the front. 20% chance of a shower, mainly in the morning. We'll get a few more chances too Tuesday and Wednesday with another weak system that comes through. And then beyond that, we should see some clearing and more comfortable temperatures, guys. We look forward to that. Thank you, Justin. Mm -hmm. 919, about 67 degrees. And coming up after the break, a live interview with a NASA expert for details on what this weekend's mission entails and how lasers are involved. And welcome back, it's 923. NASA is launching a new mission that will revolutionize how we talk with future missions in space, including at the moon, Mars, and beyond. This is so cool. The Laser Communications Relay Demonstration will launch from Kennedy Space Center in Florida this weekend, Sunday morning, and is tasked with using lasers to communicate in space. Here to talk about it with NASA is Miriam Winterston, live from Kennedy Space Center in Florida. Hey, good morning, Miriam. Hey, in the morning. Thanks for having me. Yeah, thanks for talking to us. Well, first of all, lasers in space sound like science fiction. So tell us about this mission and what it will be testing. Yeah, so uh, LCRD, Laser Communications Relay Demonstration, we are uh, 
launching Sunday morning and uh, our payload has uh, two optical terminals and it will be communicating with two optical ground stations located in uh, on top of mountains in actually California and Hawaii. And I hear that there are blizzard warnings on, for the mountaintops in Hawaii right now. So I imagine uh, optical ground station two might be getting a little bit of snow right now. Miriam, talk to us about these laser communications. What are they exactly? And what is NASA hoping to learn from this uh, type of demonstration? All right. So. Uh, typically, you know, you, you see uh, space communications in movies and, um, and on TV, and it looks really simple. It's done currently using all uh, radio frequency technology. And this time we're going to um, a much higher frequency. We're going into that, uh, into that laser, uh, the laser realm. And so what we'll be able to do is pack a whole lot more data. Uh, bec because it's a, it's a higher frequency, we can get a lot more bits per second. And so it's kind of like going from your old dial-up modem mm -hmm. to, a, um, to, to your cable modem when you, once you, you, know, you make that transition to high-speed internet. And um, yeah, so we're going to be basically learning how to use lasers in space uh, in the next summer. There's going to be a, uh, a an optical terminal delivered to the space station. And so LCRD is going to be practicing relating data from the space station, uh, you know, <clears throat> through the through the payload down to the down to the ground. And so, yeah, lot, lots to take into account, you know, weather. <laughs> I, I'm not sure that the I'm pretty sure that the lasers won't work in the snowstorm. No, probably not. Uh, some people, though, may be wondering if you'll be able to see those lasers here on Earth. No, um, the the frequency that the lasers are in are it's not visible. So sorry, you don't you won't you won't get the laser light show from it. And, and will this new type of communication change how NASA communicates with crews in space forever? Uh, yeah, basically, it's going to give us the ability to have a much you know, just just much more data. And so uh, once once the crews are, you know, walking around um, on on the on the surface of the moon, we'll be able to have really like high definition video. And also we'll be able to just pat, uh, get a lot more of our science data back at, at higher speeds. And for people watching right now, tell us again when that launch is happening and how people at home can watch. So the launch is Sunday morning at 4.04 a.m. and you can, uh, you can watch it either on uh, NASA TV on the channel or you can go to uh, nasa.gov slash laser comms. All right, Miriam Winterston with NASA on the LCRD team. Godspeed and good luck to you guys this weekend. I know you were nervous, Miriam, but you did a great job. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. All right, there's more ahead on GMSA at nine. Details on a long list of active recalls, including some grocery items you can find at HEB. Plus a recap of an exclusive interview with Alec Baldwin after that deadly shooting on the movie set of Rust. We'll tell you more about what Baldwin had to say to ABC's George Stephanopoulos. Top local stories we're following today. Firefighters staying busy overnight with a massive apartment fire on San Antonio's north side. It happened around 2 this morning at a complex on Blanco Road near Loop 410. Crews say the fire began in the laundry room and it spread to the rest of the two-story building. The residents who live on the second floor are displaced for the time being. No one was hurt, but there was a person who was checked out for smoke inhalation. The cause of that fire is still unknown. San Antonio police spending hours outside a southwest side home trying to convince a man inside to come out. This happened around midnight on Bright Valley near Loop 410. Officers say it all started with a call to with a call the man placed to his employer saying he'd hurt his roommate. The man had already barricaded himself inside his home refusing to come out by the time officers arrived on scene. Now it's unclear right now if this roommate was hurt in any way, but officers believe the man may have hurt himself with a box cutter. San Antonio police investigating a stabbing at a northwest side apartment. It happened on Gardena near Fredericksburg Road and Vance Jackson at 10 last night. And police say a man noticed someone breaking into vehicles and decided to confront that person. That's when the suspect pulled out a knife and stabbed the man. He drove off before police could get there. The person that was stabbed was taken to the hospital in critical condition. We have some safety recalls to tell you about this morning here on GMSA from HEB Soup. 
to bird's eye frozen vegetables you might have in your freezer right now. 12 on your sides, Marilyn Moritz on the foods, toys, and other products that may be dangerous to your family. Check the veggies in your freezer. Conagra Brands is recalling certain bags of bird's eye broccoli tots because they may contain small rocks and metal fragments. Two people reported dental damage. These are 12-ounce bags with best buy dates in August and November of next year. The company says throw it out. Have H-E-B creamy tomato basil soup in the cupboard? Fisher & Weiser Specialty Foods is recalling 31-ounce jars after a customer reported finding a piece of glass inside. The best buy date is October 14th, 2022. Take it back to H-E-B for a refund. These little three-inch children's projector flashlights can cause big problems. Halo is recalling 82,000 of them because children can remove the button cell batteries. This is a danger we've reported on before. If a child swallows one of these button batteries, they can quickly cause serious internal burns. A child who swallowed one out of one of these flashlights had to have surgery to remove the battery. These flashlights were distributed in care packages handed out at healthcare centers and hospitals. And more than 300,000 DeWalt job site Pro wireless headphones are recalled. They can overheat when on charge. Five fires have been reported as well as four burn injuries. These were sold at Home Depot, Lowe's and more in the past year. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. And taking a look outside with the live cam. Whoa, it's foggy out there. It looked like it had gone away for a little bit, but I guess maybe just in some parts. Well, I think this shot's a little deceiving, Steph. So it, it, okay. it's kind of up high. It looks like it's it's super gloomy out there. And there, there is some fog, some low-hanging clouds, but it's not as foggy as it was yesterday. And we've also got some shower activity that's working through. Let's first start with the radar. We'll show you where the rain is. It's all light, and it's really starting to move out here. It has made its way into eastern Bear County and then up along I-35 into the New Braunfels area, seeing some light rain there. There's going to be some slick roads as this rain uh, passes by. A little closer look there, Selma shirts over towards uh, Seguin, seeing some light rain trying to move in. And uh, I'm going to move the radar up here and we'll take a look at New Braunfels as well. That rain's just on your doorstep, but it is going to be light. Don't expect it to add up too much. As uh, we look at the satellite picture and temperatures, the clearing line is just off to our west. Places like Bandera, Las Maples, the, the sun is out now. Temperatures are in the 60s and even 70s there in Castroville. Uh, here in San Antonio, though, still some clouds, and we're sitting at 67 at the airport. There is some fog around Uvalde where visibility is down about a quarter of a mile, and then some light fog along I-35 Stinson up to Randolph and New Braunfels. Forecast for today. We lose the clouds. We get up around 78 this afternoon. Turns into another nice day. And the weekend looks pretty similar too uh, before we get a cold front. And we'll talk about that cold front and what it means for our forecast next week coming up in just a couple minutes, guys. Hey, Justin, that instant we were tracking out there, 1604 in Calabria. Uh, appears like they're working on it, but uh, Frontage Road is still backed up right now. Main lanes look good. Well, again, they're clearing up something on the westbound slash southbound Frontage Road right before Calabria. We're still seeing significant tracking, uh, uh, tr uh, stacking rather, on the access road itself. And in other news to Alec Baldwin revealing new details about that deadly shooting on the set of his movie Rust. Baldwin telling ABC News' George Stephanopoulos, quote, someone is responsible, but I know it's not me, end quote. ABC's Andrea Fiji has a story. In an ABC News exclusive, Alec Baldwin is publicly explaining for the first time the moments leading up to the shooting of cinematographer Helena Hutchins. Well, the trigger wasn't pulled. I didn't pull the trigger. So you never pulled the trigger? No, 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 no. I, I would never point a gun at anyone and pull a trigger at them, never. Baldwin says he was receiving instructions from Hutchins during a rehearsal when the gun went off on its own. I cocked the gun. I go, can you see that? Can you see that? Can you see that? And she says, and then I let go of the hammer of the gun and the gun goes off. He says he had no reason to believe there were live rounds in the gun and says assistant director Dave Halls announced that the gun was cold. Well, cold gun means there's no charge in there. There could be dummy rounds. A dummy round looks like a real bullet, but is inert, containing no explosive charge. Halls told investigators he didn't know there were any live rounds in the gun. Hall's attorney also maintains Baldwin did not pull the trigger. But investigators say a 45 caliber bullet was in the gun, killing Hutchins and wounding the director, Joel Souza. Someone put a live bullet in a gun. 
a bullet that wasn't even supposed to be on the property. Uh, someone is responsible for what happened, and I can't say who that is. Detectives have searched the shop where some of the guns and ammunition were purchased, but the owner says neither he nor his company were the source of the live bullets. They found four rounds that were close enough to take in with them. They're not a match, but they were close. The attorney for the armorer on set, Hannah Gutierrez-Reed, who was in charge of the guns, says his client has no idea where the live rounds came from and suggested the incident was sabotage. Baldwin disagrees. It's overwhelmingly likely that it was an accident. The district attorney handling the case also says she does not believe it was sabotage. Baldwin says he's cooperating with authorities. The idea that a real bullet was in that gun and would come out of that gun and kill that woman, that, that was not even in the realm of possibility. And that's the thing that they must find out is where, who brought bullets onto the set. Baldwin says he decided to speak out because he couldn't wait for the investigation to be completed before telling his side of the story. As for his future, he says he can't imagine doing a movie with a gun in it again. Andrea Fuji, ABC News, New York. More to that story still to come. Right now, 938, about 67 degrees. You're watching GMSA at 9, and a bunch of games happened this week. And going on this weekend, including wins for Texas teams and a preview of a big night for UTSA, RJ Marcus will have the details next. Welcome back. It's 941. The sports weekend already off to a fast start with the Cowboys and Spurs playing last night. And we've uh, high school football action and UTSA going for that conference title tonight. RJ Marquez is back in the studio to break down mm. everything in sports. Oh yeah, tons of action already, guys. We're talking about the Cowboys, Spurs, but of course we have to start with some local high school kids looking to keep that dream season alive in the Texas high school football playoffs. Here we go. Alamo Heights, of course, taking on Liberty Hill. This is the Class 5A state quarterfinals football in Liberty Hill, one of the power programs in the state. So this game is going to be tonight at Bobcat Stadium up there in San Marcos. The Mules are 13-0. They have had an incredible season so far under head coach Ron Ritterman. Talking about Navarro taking on Cuero. This is an old school rivalry. These two always play each other in the playoffs. This is the Class 4A Division 2 Region 4 playoffs. The Gobblers versus the Panthers. This one is tonight night as well. We got a couple of games tomorrow as well. Brennan, the last 6A team in our area that is still alive and look at who they are taking on. Lake Travis. This is always a big matchup going here with the Austin schools taking on the power from San Antonio. Brennan again is 13 and 0. So the Bears have had a great season under coach Steven Bazer and don't want to forget Fredericksburg, the battling Billies. Love that nickname right there. Taking on Austin Johnson. This game is tomorrow at the Alamo Dome. Want to mention the Brennan Lake Travis game. That game is up at Dripping Springs. So we got a lot of action still covering our local high school football team. So let's go ahead and take this Pro now to the pros. Coverage. Powered by Davis Law Firm. All right, good luck to those schools there. Cowboys. Check this out. In the Big Easy to take on the New Orleans Saints last night. So no Mike McCarthy in this one. Defensive coordinator Dan Quinn coaching the guys up. And Michael Gallup making some plays early on for the Cowboys because they definitely need it. Big time touchdown catch right there to get the Cowboys up early. Dak Prescott threw for 238 yards. Tony Pollard had himself a nice game. Look, of course, the Saints kept this thing pretty close right here. LJ Humphrey with a touchdown from Taysom Hill. LJ Humphrey is a former Longhorn there, Stephanie. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Doing some things. Yeah, that's <laughs> not many good news for the Horns nowadays, but LJ Humphrey doing some good stuff there. But uh, the Cowboys defense once again stepped up pretty solid. Again, this win, uh, not pretty, but you know what? Dallas got the job done after a tough Thanksgiving Day loss. Check out this interception by J. Ron Curse. So the Cowboys take care of the Saints 27-17 there at the Superdome. They do not play again until December 12th when they take on the Washington football team. All right, back on the court here. Don't look now, but our Spurs are on a little bit of a hot streak. They've now won three straight games after an impressive road win last night in the Rose City, taking on the Portland Trailblazers. Spurs had six players in double figures. Check out Lonnie. Lonnie Skywalker there with a big dunk. They also had 14 three-pointers in this game. They've been struggling from three, so that was great to see. Doug McDermott had himself a nice game, his first game back after missing a couple of games there. And Bryn Forbes. 
out of nowhere, Bryn Forbes looking to bring back that uh, Spurs glory there. Bryn Forbes had 18 points off the bench. Again, the Spurs take care of business last night against the Portland Trailblazers. They led from start to finish, so really just a solid win all the way around. They improved to 7-13, and 13, and they are now playing at Golden State. The Warriors, guys, once again, one of the better teams in the NBA. So this will be a tough matchup for the Spurs, but maybe they could go for that fourth win in a row. Hopefully. All right, moving to the college game now. Tonight, UTSA hosting Western Kentucky, the Hilltoppers, for the Conference UNSA Championship there at the Alamo Dome. So both these teams are 7-1 and one in conference play, and they actually played earlier this year. This was a barn burner. UTSA took care of business there, 52 to 46 out there at Western Kentucky. So this was the Hilltopper's only conference loss when topping 40 points. So this thing was back and forth. A lot of points expected to be scored tonight. The Hilltoppers actually lead the conference in scoring this season. They're averaging 45 points per game. UTSA, of course, 11 and one. They had that loss last week, but uh, looking to do some big things here. And this was the pep rally last night there with the mayor, the UTSA president, as they get set for what should be a huge game tonight at the Alamo Dome. Kickoff at 6 p.m. I would say get there early yeah. as soon as possible because it's going to be packed around that area. They're expecting probably more than about 40,000 fans. Oh, we sure hope it's students. really loud tonight. Yeah, yeah. It'd be awesome to see this team win this conference championship. Of course, they had that setback last week, mm -hmm. but right. this would be really nice. And then they'll find out what bowl they're going to. And then last, certainly not least, UIW at Sam yes, Houston. Yes, thank you so much for bringing that up. Yes, UIW sir. taking on the defending FCS champs, the Sam Houston Bearcats. So that's going to be a fun one. The Cardinals looking to make a nice run here in the college football playoffs as well. Indeed. Yeah. yeah. RJ Marquez. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks, guys. A preview of weekend sports. There are lots going on. How how are we looking uh, weather-wise, Justin Horn? Any chance of any more showers in our area over the next 12 to 24 hours? No, I think the rain is moving out. We're going to be done with the rain, at least for a little while. And by the way, let me just add, to tag on the sports, those jerseys mm -hmm. last night. Love them. Yeah. Fire. Love cool. them. Love for the right. Spurs? Yes. Yes, sir. Big fan. Anyway, uh, speaking of uh, good-looking shots here, let's look at this uh, picture from uh, Floresville this morning. Great picture of the sunrise. Now, we did have some clouds and fog there, but there was enough of uh, sun just to make some beautiful colors there in the distance. Now the sun's starting to pop back out. So beautiful sunrise indeed. Thank you very much for sending that in. And as we look at the radar, uh, Mark mentioned some of that rain. Really starting to move out now uh, on the east side of San Antonio and pushing east. Most of this is really pretty light, but it has caused for some wet roads here in San Antonio, and there have been a few slick spots and some issues this morning. This will continue to move along I-35 and along I-10 and out of San Antonio. We will zoom in a little bit closer here. Places like Seguin and New Braunfels starting to get a little bit of that light rain uh, as it moves east. Uh, looking at the radar and satellite, so there is the rain. There's kind of the thicker cloud cover. As you go back west, there is some fog that has developed where the skies were clear earlier. So places like Uvalde, Sabinal, there's a little bit of fog or a little cloudiness that has uh, developed. And we're seeing that with the visibility down in Uvalde, down to a mile and a quarter. That should improve here pretty quickly. And uh, most of us will see sun this afternoon. No, it doesn't look that way when you look at this shot, uh, but I do think that's the case. 67 at the airport, still reporting a little bit of light rain. South Southeast Julie winds at about 10. And it's warm this morning, 60s. And even 70 now, Stinson, there's going to be a lot of 70s on the map. And I think even this afternoon, there could be some 80s as you get down to places like Carissa Springs and Catula with the clearing. It's it's going to be a warm afternoon, that's for sure. As far as dew points are concerned, humid through the weekend. We'll start off with some morning fog and cloud cover, and then a front comes through Monday morning. That dries us out a little bit, but just for a day because moisture comes back into play Tuesday and is even around on Wednesday. So there will be a couple more chances for rain, in fact, on Tuesday and Wednesday. And as we look at the future cast, uh, the weekend, I think, is pretty quiet. Now, there will be a front to our north both Saturday and Sunday, and that may generate a little bit of shower and storm activity, but I think it stays north of us. And then by the time we get into Monday, that front finally gets pushed and sinks south. We'll be on the tail end of things here, but we could see a shower or storm just Monday morning. It's a small window. And we are not expecting to get much rain out of that either. By 5 o'clock, the rain is pushing south. We'll see if the clouds clear out too. Uh, regardless, it's going to be a cooler day, and we'll get some gusty winds behind this front. So Monday will feel a little bit different than what we've been dealing with last couple of days. So forecast for today, still a very small chance for shower east of San Antonio through about noontime. And then 
we break out into partly cloudy skies. 78 degrees by 4 o'clock, 74 at 6 p.m. If you have plans to go out tonight, uh, it looks good. It's going to be a little humid, a little warm, not what you would expect in December, but all in all pretty nice. 77 tomorrow, 79 on Sunday. We start off with some fog and clouds. That could be a factor for the Rock and Roll Marathon Sunday morning. Not ideal running conditions uh, as it will be a little bit warm. That front comes through Monday, 65 for a high, 66 Tuesday, another slight chance of rain. Monday, again Tuesday, and another small chance on Wednesday as well, guys. And that's all right. Warm Sunday morning, but not crazy hot. Not crazy hot. <laughs> we'll take it. Thank yep. you, Justin. 10 till uh, 10, about 67 degrees. And details on a new doggy daycare opening near downtown. Hey guys, coming up on live, we've got Rachel Zegler from West Side Story, plus some amazing holiday bargains with Monica Mangan. We'll see you soon right here on live. And how about celebrating the holidays this year, Texas style coming up tomorrow on GMSA, Texas Parks and Wildlife, decking out some of our iconic state parks with Christmas lights and even hosting visits with Santa. We're going to tell you all about it tomorrow. Let's check out Transguide. We've been keeping an eye on something that's had uh, the frontage road packed out there near 1604 and Culebra. Looks like they're letting some cars around that scene right now. We haven't been able to tell exactly what's been going on there, but it looks like they're cleaning up something. It almost looked like foam or paint or something like that, but we're just speculating at this point, considering our only information has been from what we've been able to see. Again, this is out there. 1604 Access Road at Culebra. This would be on the, if you were traveling westbound, and then eventually southbound part of 1604. And there, yeah. look, it just opened up. I was going to say, it looks like the Access Road, it looks like there's movement there now. Finally, a little bit. <laughs> yeah, it looks like they're opening it up right now as we speak, or whatever it is, is uh, it's not quite as log jammed as it was earlier. Agreed? I agree. Okay, Justin. Uh, well, let's look at the radar one more time. We got those showers now moving out. They're all really light, and we're actually starting to see some clearing. So the sun pops out this afternoon, turns into another nice day. Okay, so what have they not planned for the Pearl this here close to KSAT? I mean, I mean oh, I'm waiting for announcement of a heliport, a uh, skyscraper <laughs> from Stark Industries from the Marvel Universe. Yeah. I mean, it's got to be everything else, so yeah. it needs one more thing, right? Right, that's right. in five years, but for now, we have doggy daycare. We do, and this is a big deal here in San Antonio. Yeah. We love our fur babies, and a doggy daycare with walking, boarding services is set to open at the Pearl. Good Dog opens next week, December 8th that's at Grayson. That's right. It's uh, 1,800 uh, square foot area. So with, that's pretty cool. Uh, they're, they say they're really looking forward to being a part of the Pearl neighborhood and being able to serve the dogs and dog owners there, which is so true. I was talking to Mark about this. A lot of people go out there with their pets anyway. Very popular destination. A facility owned by Stephen and Kaylee Bell, designed for dogs that weigh 35 pounds or less or measure less than 15 inches of height due to space limitations, though walks will be provided for dogs of any size. Yeah, so boarding's offered at a nightly rate starting at $42 a night or $35 a night for family members. And that's pretty much standard rate. Again, this is over at, it's called... What's the place called again? Yeah, that's what I was looking for. Good dog. Oh, yeah, Good there dog. you go. Good dog. Good boy. Good dog. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, Grace in between Euclid and Elmira. Have a great